about it. Okay. So, hello to all the viewers watching today's episode. I just want to welcome um, South African songstress, absolutely amazing vocalist and artist, Corlia Bota to Stortko Confessions. So, Corlia, so welcome to you and thank you for joining us in this project. We're really, really privileged to have you. Thank you. I must say, this is definitely the most interesting <laughs> venue for an interview ever. So, it's my absolute <laughs> pleasure to be here. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> So, Corlea, the first question for, for everybody who doesn't know uh, much about you, please tell us about your career, just an overview of your career, anything that you want to share about it, over, like where it started wow. and up until before the pandemic hit <laughs> us. Uh, when I need to speak about the length of my career so far, I feel like I'm about 60 years old because I started so young. Um, I had my first concert when I was five years old and the moment that I stepped onto the stage, it, it resembled the feeling of home to me and I've never been, well, I have been nervous. I, I lie if I say I've never been nervous, but I've never had stage fright before in my life. I've never performed and um, building on that, I, I mean, I, I uh, participated in, I was in a children's choir and an opera. I did musical theater. I started recording wow. my first album I recorded when I was 12 years old. Um, I've done, shush, how many albums have I done now? Four, five, six. Uh, that, that's now solo albums and project albums that I've done. Um, wow. I've performed on some of the biggest concerts, concerts and stages uh, in South Africa. I've traveled abroad. Um, I'm part of Big Productions, which I'm also a co-founder of. Uh, projects like classics is through it yeah and yeah that's me i'm just a performer singer songwriter clown <laughs> that's me wow. <laughs> you see that's that's the special thing about it like you're a person who knew from a young age and your family obviously also knew this is what you were meant yeah. to to do it was just obvious from the beginning um i yeah i met thing. you i met you many years ago when we were doing adjudication work for that University Serenade, you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I remember. I can't even remember in what year that was, like 2012, I think, I think it was 2012. 2012. Around there. <sighs> and I, I actually remember you telling a story. Well, I said to you that I saw an album of you and you, Masikela, was it? A jazz album that, that I saw. In, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. can listen. And that was so interesting yeah. to me and amazing because who, who would have thought that Korlia Bota can sing jazz and did an album with you, Masekela. And I remember you telling me a story about something that, that didn't go right, something that went wrong there and so and so. But <laughs> you didn't yeah. say. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I can't say it's sad that nobody knows that you can sing jazz, but it's such an art form. And that's what makes you so special to me is you're an artist and a vocalist. You're not just a singer. You have this Thank creativity you. and musicality that's part of your, your, your thing and your makeup. But I don't know. Um, Thank you. In terms of what you do artistically, the songs that you write, you're obviously in the commercial scene. Um, yes. how, how much of that, uh, I think a lot of people have this idea that people in the commercial side of things don't, some of them don't really mm -hmm. want to be there or some of them just do it because they want to. But for you, I, yeah. I, I think you're truly happy in doing this. I, it, feel, it feels like you, you're, embodying this thing of being an artist and a vocalist <laughs> what is your experience like well I, I i wouldn't i wouldn't say that i'm in the commercial scene as such i think i'm in the wrong country to be in the commercial scene because okay. if i need to sing about how big my jeep is or how big my bonfire of my bra is or <laughs> how much brandy i drink i yeah. would i would slip my wrists about two months ago already yeah. Um, so I, I try to I try to fuse um, commercial value with um, artistic integrity. Um, that is something that Nathaniel actually taught me. Um, a bit of advice he gave me a few years ago, saying that when he started out, obviously, I mean, he was flamboyantly weird. So uh, yeah. I think people initially came to his concerts to see <laughs> what the rage is all about, um, yeah. and he started his concerts off giving. 90% of what the crowd would like and would respond to and 10% was what he wanted to do and over the years as he got more famous and as his career grew 
the tables were turned. And now he does about 95% of what he wants to. And he just gives the crowd that little bit, you know, that they that they would feel comfortable with in any other scenario. So um, I think that's a great piece of advice to follow for anybody. Um, obviously, a commercial value needs to be apparent in your career, but I think you need to keep your artistic integrity alive for for as long as you can and for as much as you can in every aspect of your career. Exactly. And I also think that yeah. it's really fantastic to have mentors like that, like Nathaniel. I remember yes. backing vocals for him. I remember this very well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So, but that's exactly the thing. The industry is not just, it's not just business. It's a very social thing and the relationships we build yeah. have such a massive yeah. impact on our choices. The, in, the, the, um, in, the input that we get from the people who we surround ourselves with, I could say. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So Gulia, I want to ask you now about, um, the pandemic. When we got the news early March, this is a lockdown. Um, the country's going to be locked down for three weeks. What was your reaction to that? And then please tell us in the year and year and a half that came, what happened? The chaos, everything. How did you manage? <laughs> How did you, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I've been a touring artist for the last uh, 10 years, I would say. I mean, at some point in my career, I would have 27 shows per month where I would be in a completely different town every single day. And wow. I would literally just come home to do my washing and then pack everything back in and go back on tour. So wow. when I had the when I heard the initial news of three week lockdown, I was like, praise Jesus, I don't have to live out of a suitcase. Exactly. <laughs> three weeks. Yeah. Um, and at that point, I was busy moving. I was I was actually in my father's house as he was building a little like a one bedroom kind of apartment for me yeah. on his premises. So it felt to me like it was a blessing in disguise because now I can plan, you know, and get the rest of my furniture together. And then after three weeks, it just extended and extended. And then my furniture was out the door. Cause I mean, you have to save up for the rainy days ahead. That's and it. I think the, the, fact that, the fact that no one knew exactly what was coming i mean the lockdown was kind of indefinitely extended for for whatever amount of time and i just i started panicking at some point because the nest egg that i had you know gotten together over the years can only last so long yeah and i remember so clearly about five years ago i think i had to make a choice in financially in my career yeah. Am I going to invest and buy into property or am I going to make an album? Uh, and I mean, that is something most musicians, most musicians, um, you know, face. You need to keep on creating to be able to afford everything else in your life because you need to stay relevant and you need to have content in, <laughs> in, in order for you to perform and to, to get more money. Um, but it just feels like you're going nowhere slowly at some point. So, I mean, five years ago, I had to make a decision like that. And yeah. then last year, I, made, I had to make that decision again. You know, what, what, what am I going to do in order to just survive yeah. at this point? Um, and, I feel, and I feel like I am still there. I feel like that is still what's happening right now. Um, I can't see. fit into freaking pants that I wore last year. My wife's been <laughs> up and down throughout my whole life. But at uh, this point, I I can't really be bothered because I'm just trying to survive at this point. I can't be bothered by, you know, come to our salon and let's try this new, uh, you know, whatever technique or something, you know, to keep the pound off. I'm just, uh, I live day to day and just try to make it work at this point. I think most of us are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, it's so it's so liberating, I think, to hear this from somebody like you, because people have this perception. I surely had this perception that people yes. who are full time professional performers have it made. They will survive a pandemic because surely mm. they've managed their finances in a way 
um, that they can survive something like this. Okay. But it was a question of a few months, literally the handful of people that I know who are professional, yeah. they were down and out. And that made something click for me. Like, yeah. I, I, um, I'm actually, what does it mean to be professional then? What, what does it mean? Because there's value to what we do and that has a price tag. So if you can put money on something, how do you work with that? How do you, I don't understand how it works really. I don't know enough about how this business work, I think, but I would like to understand better. And I think everybody <laughs> would like to understand better, especially people who are watching this who want to go into the yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah. So I guess like, I, I think there's a very, very, a very big misconception to what the the industry entails um being artist specific i think the international press um has a lot to do with that because you read about artists and actors and uh you know just celebrities in general from america or the uk or where wh whichever part around the world yeah. and you read about their cars and you read about their houses and you read about the multiple designers that they have and the shoes and the endorsements and everything that that goes along with that yeah. and immediately i think the south african public kind of linked that to uh I hate the word famous. Uh, I don't consider myself that at all, but, but I just have a, a, a well-known face. Um, I, I yeah. think they immediately link that to famous uh, people or people that they see on a regular basis on a bigger platform. And that is definitely not the case. I mean, we do not whatsoever make the amount of, 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 of money um, with concerts or with touring or with 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 albums even i mean with with regards to streaming we make sense literally yeah. a few per yeah. stream yeah. and that is why uh, um doing concerts was our biggest form of, of or is our biggest form of income and that's why i think the pandemic um you know spread so much uh, stress and 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 anxiety uh, in in the whole uh, industry because our only chance at a livelihood has now been taken away exactly yeah it's hectic it is hectic i, I think you yeah. are now the i don't know the 15th guest that i've had and um you touch on exactly the same things that everybody's been been saying after all mm. that's been said and done yeah still we cannot perform how do we how do what can we do yes. about it and it's that feeling of what am I supposed to do about it? I, I often thought, you know what, I'm going to go into a parking lot at a shopping mall because all the, the, the car guards are allowed to work. They can they get up in the morning, they go, they do their work, yeah. they get their income, they go home. They can do their job. But us, who've been working Absolutely. for years, some of us have yes. even studied, et cetera, et cetera, you're not allowed to work, bam, done. And yes. then the next question is, yes. you yes. know, with the government, um, they, they provided support and whatever but i'm not sure how that process went for everybody um, um in the past few weeks that i've spoken to everybody yeah. some said they didn't even know how to apply some said they did apply but they, they received yeah. money only if they could prove that they had work lined up and they only got um, the money for that work so if you didn't have an actual contract with all the yeah. admin that was really you couldn't get that money and then the other thing is um yeah, we were saying yesterday, actually, that the communication style between the government and corporate institutions is very, it doesn't cater for the artist. We, we don't know how to communicate properly with each other because I don't know. I don't know. I don't platform I don't know. so corporate and not know. I do Just quickly tell me what I must do. Where is it? Knopies. There we go. Like Vietnam. But anyway, what's what was your experience yeah. like with that? Getting that support from the government and da da da. <laughs> the grant. Yeah, ach, yeah. No. Um I I actually did not even apply. Um yeah. I have had experience with with government and the arts quite a bit um in my yeah. career. The yeah. first uh the, the the first time I, I encountered the lack of um uh, support from them uh, was when I was 12 years old I toured to Japan and we were ambassadors for our country 
Yeah. And the closest that I got was uh, like a, a literally a five minute meeting at my local municipality. Um, they did not offer any form of financial, I'm not even talking about financial support or remuneration. Um, I'm just talking about like awareness or uh, um, uh, what is the word support. Yeah. They gave me they gave me a few caps, like the most horrible things you've ever seen, <laughs> and about 10 key rings. And they said, um, here are some gifts for you to go and distribute overseas. And please tell them how wonderful your country is. And I'm like, wow. Wow. Um, I, I, wow. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to do the trick. <laughs> yes. So that was the first experience I got. And then the second experience I got was when um, I sang at President, President Mbeki's second inauguration. Now, I, I mean, the first time I went to Japan, I was 12, and we were a multiracial, multicultural, multilingual group yep. that went over there. And we had to rely on each other because the language barrier was so big that, I mean, we had to kind of rely on each other and support each other to get it was it was insane so for me color and, oh, and, and and the things that are still very much issues today have never been issues for me yeah um but one does get to experience a few crazy things uh, uh in, in in the country when you perform and yeah. i saw money being thrown at events um when it comes to governmental functions. I mean, uh, President Mbeki's inauguration was just insane. We were one of, I think, five or six events taking part over two days. We were yeah. in the State Theater. Every international delegate was present uh, at that function. Wow. And we were cast of about, I don't know, 300 people. And it was one of five events. Yeah. And it was just, it was, insane it, it was insane to watch but now i mean artists like us i mean governmental support is, is something we don't rely on um we i think i spoke about this the other day i was i was on a program called talks and chops uh, on cake net with 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 Brad and Corsa and talks on Linda, and we actually spoke about the fact that um i mean if you play a sport especially rugby or cricket or soccer, you are immediately an ambassador for your country. But yeah. something like our medal winners coming back into South Africa and the government saying, ah, oh, we don't feel the need to really, you know, tell them well done. We don't need, really need to see the need to give them some kind of homecoming or anything. Yeah. Immediately there's a barrier uh, being set up between people. And the problem for me, I've always felt, I mean, Music is a thing that unites people and bring them together. At every rugby uh, match or whatever, there's tons of music being played. At every cricket match, every soccer match, um, music, I think, is the foundation of everything. Even if you can't understand the language, you can feel whatever the emotion is of the song. Yep. Music is the most universal language, apart from currency, apart from religion, apart from, from anything else. And I feel that us, we get the least support out of everybody and it's 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 just it's it gets to you sometimes it's a little bit frustrating absolutely i think um that's quite it's it's important to say because the morale is so low that people don't actually want to go and get the help that's supposedly there for them because yes. the morale is low and even if we do sort out the administration part yes. of what we do yes. get our contracts ready and you must do things the right way even then, I'm not sure if it will actually make a real change in that. Yeah, it's terrible. I, we don't know what to do about it, but it, it's important to speak about it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, I want to ask you, um, about your creativity and your art and your expression during the pandemic. Um, did you go into online streaming concerts? What? How did you perform during this this past year and a half, especially in the beginning? What did you try out to see if you can still just get connect with an audience? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I have to. I have to tell you that I took a little bit of a sabbatical, um, not willingly. Um, I, I I just feel like I mean I I can play piano. 
very limited uh, uh, piano playing skills, just enough to kind of get me through a song at a yeah. time. Um, and I had to do something for a, a radio interview. And then literally we checked everything like an hour before the interview. And just before we had to go live, like everything just bombed up and all of my little technical setups and everything that I did just bombed and it was horrible. And the stress level of that was like so bad for me that I decided I'm not doing this again <laughs> by myself. Yeah. Um, so the only online concert I did was, was a, a, a well-produced concert. It was a, um, a revision or kind of a best of classics. Yeah. Um, which tickets were sold online and it was on a big platform, a streaming platform where I could kind of just do what I do and let the technical team handle the yeah. rest of the technical things yeah. that I'm not so on par with. Um, and even that, it was just so strange. I mean, we, we it was a whole cast of, of classics, which I, I missed so much. And um, I think it was so wonderful for us to perform together again, especially during this time where everything is so weird and for months not having performed. Yeah. Um, but to perform and sing your heart out and then there's just absolute silence and someone saying, yeah. you know, <gasps> so I mean, weird. we, in a way we are used to it when we do something like a music video, mm. um, but still it's not the same. It's not a live yeah. performance. We, I mean, the adrenaline rush that you get from performing live, you would know, mm -hmm. it's just completely different to anything else. So um that was kind of the first I think that was the first online thing I did and then I, I started planning a, a solo um online show but I wanted to do it not I wouldn't say on a bigger scale but on a more professional scale yeah um I spoke to again I spoke to Nathaniel uh and he said he plainly said as I know no a pampoen blaar achter a guitar langs a vier moet sien, gaan ja. ek skree. Ja, and that is exactly what I felt like. I mean, no. every every single singer, songwriter who yeah. can play an instrument or can sing yeah. five notes in a row decided to do an online concert for with like a donate button and I just felt like I, yeah. I don't know if I want to put myself through that. I, yeah, I, yeah I, I don't know. I'd rather do something completely different to generate yeah. funds than to take what I used to know and what my audience used to know me uh, for doing and, and water it down into something else. I, I, if I were to do something like that, I wanted it to be as professional and, 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 and as in the moment as, as my live shows could be. So I decided to stay away from that completely. Yeah. I think that's, that's another side of being um, a full-time performer. You do have a brand that's out there and you, you, you've stepped into that persona that you yes. created and that product. So it actually doesn't make sense to, to do anything else but that. And yeah. that's a huge challenge, I think, to have to do that. Because like you say, you, you're not the technical guy. You're not the, you don't do that. You do your thing. You actually need that team <laughs> to carry on. Otherwise, you, you can't yeah. do it you, and you won't do it. Yeah. I completely get that. Um, but that's a really good no. point that you made. No. It's like, I'm all after a cocky bossy out to and begin sing. Like, everybody started singing now and doing shows and da da da. Um, <laughs> it's just a scene. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is now the thing, nay. Wow. A, like a little bit of a conundrum here. There's two sides to the coin. If a person decides, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm going to sing, I'm going to start singing now, whether they're good or not, if they have a following, and that following becomes big mm -hmm. and they actually they, they need to see that person perform. Then I guess that person can get a career and do their thing and they become professional and everything. Um, but on the other side, it really does take a very specific set of skills and professionalism and mindset and a long list of things to actually call yourself a yeah. professional musician and a professional artist. I want you to tell us what is your definition or description of professional? What does that mean to you? And the reason why I'm asking this is there's a price tag. I bring it back to that. There's value to what you do. I brought to buy a yammer. There's value. I can't open There's value to what you do. And there's a price tag to that. Vestania. That's cool. I want you to tell yes, me. Absolutely. Please. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what is your definition of professionalism? Uh, I feel like I'm completely biased. My definition of professionalism, 
Wow. You see, I I came through the ranks. I came through different ranks than, than most artists. I mean, most artists start performing like once they, you know, get out of school and they perform in bars and they schlep all of their gear with them and like go from bar to bar to bar. Yeah. And then eventually they get spotted somewhere and then they become like famous. That's like, that's the American dream. Everybody talks about that's like the, the old school thing. Mm. I came through the ranks in a different way. I mean, because I started so very, very young, I could not go and perform in places like a bar or things like that. A mm. restaurant was always a bit of a tough sell for me because I want to I wanna, um, connect with the people and not just be background music. So I, yeah. I never enjoyed doing that so much. Um, but wherever I could perform, singing competitions, those type of things, where, whenever I could get a chance to perform, I would perform. Mm -hmm. And most people think that, I, I mean, I was, I was part of a group called Lieflinger, and that is where the Afrikaans community, I think, uh, heard of me the first time. And they think that I just disappeared, just appeared, you know, out of nowhere one night and we became this overnight success. And that's not the thing. There's a, there's a little yeah. saying that goes, it takes a lot of years to become an overnight success. And I was paying my dues. I was doing backing vocal sessions. I was driving from one thing to the other. I was doing gigs. I was setting up my own, uh, you know, sound systems and putting it down again. And my parents were so involved. And it was just, you know, and, and I think theater for me is what gave me, um, I think the, the biggest lessons in, in my career and in life as well, you know, to always show up on time, to always show up completely prepared, not just to know your part, but to know the part before you, the part after you, so that if something were to happen on stage, that you could fill in or help someone out immediately. Mm. Um, and just to be a nice person, I think, not to be an arsehole. Um, yeah. Mm. I think that's the, those are the most important things. To, to me, all of those things form professionalism and it puts you in a different league to other people. And, and also, I think to be to be professional to some point is, is also not to take yourself too seriously. I mean, mm. in the blip of the whole existence of the planet and everything out there, you don't even register on the radar. So I don't understand so. why you built yourself this little pedestal to be seated upon. <laughs> Um, yes. I think to not to take yourself too yeah. seriously all the time, but to take what you do seriously enough to respect other people's time and respect their talent and value them as well, um, as much as you deserve or can be there, anybody else can be in that spot as well and be thankful that you are actually in that spot. That's it. At that time. Yeah. That it's a mindset. It's a mindset yeah. that according to which you live. Um, I want to ask you um, yes. about this fame yes. thing. And now that you're saying that um, people who become so important and famous and everything, and then they get paid so much money just to walk across the stage <laughs> to hand over an award or something. And then the band gets paid like a quarter of that amount. Somebody told this story. <laughs> you know, the band has to play for five hours, but the famous guy. Exactly. Will, yeah, that, yeah. That's so interesting to me. But um, I don't know if you saw this on Facebook. Um, um, a, a celebra mm. <laughs> celebrities. Um, um, I don't know. What did they have to Like you could pay them to send somebody, somebody a birthday message or a well-wishing message or whatever the case may be. All these faces came up like on Facebook yes. and then, um, but what was so funny to me is that each celebrity had a different price. Now to give you an example, I can't remember who and whatever else. Yeah. <laughs> How funny is that? <laughs> Rihanna now is 50 grand. Uh, Steve Hofmer is 80 grand. I'm part grand. of this platform, that's why I'm laughing. I'm part of the platform. <laughs> yeah. How does yeah. that work? Why, why is this person? Uh, more valuable than that person at the end mm. of like who determines the value? I don't get it. I don't understand. Yes. No, that that because I'm part of the platform, I yeah. I know what the process is. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. Um, I, 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 I myself, I'm I I myself. I mean, I I would like to. <laughs> uh, I would like to obviously be able to wish somebody a happy birthday or whatever. It yeah. does take time out of my day, especially during something like the pandemic where I'm not performing 
Yeah. Um, because it is not something I, I just usually do. I mean, somebody can't just send me a message and say, hey, can you my voice not record for my movies? It's really <laughs> weird because it's a personal thing, oh, you know, yeah. but it became profitable and it became a, 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 like a scheme. <laughs> I see. Um, so they actually asked me, mm. um, what would you want to earn? And then uh, I put up my little price and I'm happy with that. I mean, does it, does it make me a hell of a ton of money? No. Does it yeah. fill a gap? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But to some people, to some people, um, it is according to what their profile is and how much they think or feel they are worth. I see. Um, and I also saw some of those prices and I went, I would <laughs> never in my life <laughs> pay that much pay that much for anybody to wish yeah. my boyfriend my mother and my cousin <laughs> anybody a happy birthday <laughs> and I've also seen some of the some of the other videos I mean a, a, a cousin of mine I won't say who or what but a cousin of mine actually got one of those videos for her birthday from someone and she actually mailed the establishment or the company saying would you pay this amount for this That's video the- I want a refund. This is horrible. I got this as a present and I want a refund for five. Wow, this funny. It was it was incredibly weird. It was a terrible video. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it 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 is it is according to every single artist or or socialite or sports star, according to their own um uh evaluation. What was the word that I used? Anyway, according to, to their own yeah, 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 worth. Uh, that's that's how the prices are determined i see because it's interesting it's interesting to see that the profile that's the, the word, profile, profile. That's the word. Yes, that. but it's interesting to see that how people value themselves in terms of yeah. money you know it is rather interesting like if you go and, <laughs> if you go and look for a gig for instance um it's well, the, I- yeah yeah uh, if you go and look for a gig i i always just think about uh, i mean it, if you if you go to a birthday party or something right and you think about how much you would want to spend on a birthday gift for someone so i I, for instance i like to buy really personal gifts for someone i don't just go and give a voucher or just bring a bunch of flowers or whatever it depends on how much stuff that person has but i like to put in some thought into the birthday gift that i buy for someone and whatever that amount is usually that Mm. i spend Mm. I thought that maybe that is the kind of amount that someone would want to pay for a video that is a personal experience to someone else. So yeah. I didn't even base it on my profile or how many likes or views yeah. or whatever I have on any platform. I uh, literally just made <laughs> like a logical decision yeah. as to what I would ask for a video. Exactly. That's sensible. Because who, <laughs> who, who's going to buy? Wow, they're so creative. <laughs> Who's going to buy someone an 800 rand gift for their birthday after all, you know? Um, I, it would have been nice to receive a message. 800 from... rand isn't even the limit. There was one for like five grand. I mean... No way. Rara. Canada. There's no whole mm. buyer. <laughs> yeah. There's a lag. I'm sorry. <laughs> there is a lag. I know. It's, it's, yeah, there is definitely a lag. So viewers just know sorry. there's a little bit of a thingy going on. Anyway, but it's it's funny. It's just interesting to see. Yeah, sorry, Ella. Yeah, so uh, let me think yeah, of this people now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, that's pretty much what I wanted to speak about. It's just a little bit about the industry, your career, how you've built it up, um, your experience with the government, your experience during the pandemic, how you kept together. It's interesting that you, I mean, you're a professional you know what your brand is you, you're not gonna go into this random concerts online and stuff like that tell me what 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 are your plans currently for the rest of the year and for next year you're still figuring things out um well i must say that i i mean apart from from all of the 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 yakking and the complaining about about the um, you know the pandemic and, and COVID and the situation we are in, I do count myself rather fortunate 
Um, I mean, the little bit of a nest egg that I had, well, firstly, I had to record an album. Second, on my 30th birthday, I took myself and my mom to New York for almost three weeks. I will never, ever make that money back, but the experiences what? are priceless. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the little bit of a nest egg that I had left um, after starting to buy some furniture and all of that, I mean, that ran out by like, I think November or December. That was kind of done. Yeah. And so for January, I thought to myself, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm. And I have to tell you, I don't know whether you are a religious person or not. And mm. I mean, each to his own to all of the viewers out there. But mm. I spoke to a friend of mine um, and the other day and I said, you know what? It's, 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 it's tough having to worry at the end of every single month, what the hell are you going to do? You know, what rabbit are you going to pull out of the hat this month to make it work? But yep. I'm so fortunate that at the end of every month, something happened, something came up, whether it was a little corporate or whether it was a birthday party, somebody wanted me to format, whether it was a new artist recording an album and they want, you know, someone to guide them through the vocals, come in and produce the vocals for them. Something yep. always came up before my time ran out and I'm so grateful for that and um, my friend actually coined a phrase for that and she says she calls it kingdom currency because we as humans always tend to worry about the day of tomorrow but it is because we try to rely on ourselves and not rely and just believe steadfastly in what we should <laughs> Whether you believe in the law of attraction, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in whatever, you you just you need to you need to just let go and rely on that. Um, I've been very very fortunate that in the way that I was trained when I was young, vocally trained, I um, I was able to take all of my knowledge, all of my experience that I've gained in my career, and pass that on. So I started a, an on online singing school in wow. April was it April last year nice. um and I immediately started with like 20 students which is a full-time school um wow. that was fantastic I had uh, students from Amazing. all over the country and I've met almost all of them now um okay. with regards to you know regulations being being a, a bit more relieved um so I've met almost all of them and we're still training with some of them I'm still training some of them said well I've got my life back now so thank you <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll come back to singing lessons at some point uh, when, when, I, when I feel good and ready and when yeah. I'm bored out of my mind again um <laughs> some of them I've continued with um and also I've started a very very big, big project with um the Kiro private schools um, I was part of the adjudication for their internal I stayed fit for, for Kira, which was online. Yeah. And then they chose me as a mentor um, for one of these kids and also uh, doing like a vocals 101 workshop. So I flew down to Cape Town for some of that. I was up here for some of that. I'm still mentoring um, one of the winners of, of the competition. Um, and we're actually doing a concert in a few weeks. That was my challenge that I put forward for her. And um, also, out of everything that can happen in lockdown, I fell in love. And wow. we recently moved in together, which is now like a year and a half after we, we uh, started dating and whatever. Awesome. So um, we, we are living together and we are trying to make ends meet. And he has a corporate job, but he's also a musician, a singer and songwriter. So nice. we were able to do things together as well. We would be able to go to do a corporate, you know, and I... People obviously knew my profile and my name, but he's the one making the music that everybody like dances to. He does absolutely anything. Um, and then together we sold packages to corporates or, you know, to do private functions or whatever. So I've, I've been really blessed. I've done very interesting things the past year, year and a half, but it's, it's been, it's been a very cool ride. And I think for, for me, um, you know, having traveled so much and having only been focused on my career for such yeah. a long time, mm. it's been um, an enlightenment, you know, just to be able to do regular things and to be able to schedule, you know, like dinners or, or you know, something with friends or with family or to attend a wedding, actually, and not just get the invite and go, oh, sorry, I have a concert that Saturday. So yeah. it's been cool to have a, a normal <laughs> life. If I can call it that, 
exactly. I do miss performing. I do miss everything that it entails. But I feel I feel like I haven't been. Um, what is the word? I haven't been schneid out of out of a life <laughs> in this past year and a half. It's it's been great, and I'm still having fun. Awesome. It's great that you can see the positive side still. You have to see the positive side because there truly did come a lot of positive things out of this. You have situation. to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but Absolutely. Some, yeah. But I, if I can comment yeah. on the fact that you, um, you started teaching, I think a lot of people started teaching who've never taught before, you know, they, they didn't also receive any form of teaching ever. Uh, which is difficult mm. but this is now part of what makes you a professional yeah. i think is if you've really spent time on learning your skill practicing your instrument understanding how it works yes. how to maintain it and all that stuff it's part of it it's part of this job really so um exactly i think a lot of people realize that yes and, and are looking into other avenues of, of getting income and checking out their own playing again most definitely i think all of us have had to do yeah. that but anyway absolutely Cordia, it was so nice I chatting know. with you. Um, it was really, really nice to have you on. on Thank the show. you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's it's really, really cool that you're here. I want to ask you, um, why did you decide to join this project? What do you think is the value that this brings to society, to the industry, etc.? Uh, <laughs> well, if if I, if I have my facts uh, correct, I'm the only um i think commercial artists you said that you are speaking to or, pretty, or have spoken to pretty much pretty much yeah 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 so i i, I think i think it was important for me um just to let i mean i think to inform the the general public or you know anybody that that, that is interested in music that there's not much difference between my life and theirs. I mean, me and my boyfriend are sharing the rent at this point and I'm hustling, I'm doing everything I can to kind of bring, bring my part to the table. Um, we also discuss what we are gonna have for dinner every single night, we have chores. Um, and it has been this way in my life every single day for as long as I've been part of the industry. Mm. Yes, do I sometimes make more money than someone else during a month? Yes, absolutely, I do. Mm. Do I sometimes, some months, not know how I'm going to pay my rent or my car? Yes, absolutely, just like everyone else. Mm. And it's not that we live extravagant lifestyles. Well, I, I'm obviously speaking for myself and, and a few other artists. I know that there are some artists who are you know, I mean, if, if this is God, they are literally right here and very yeah. untouchable. I know we do have those artists in our industry yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but I mean, for, for the most part, I have a very, very ordinary life. I drive an ordinary car. I have a cat and a dog who want to murder each other. They are not friends at, at, <laughs> at all. And I spend... Um, I, I, I spend about as much money on toiletries as any other girl. There's not much more. Um... I just happen to do a very interesting job that most people don't. Um, but that does not mean that I think of myself more highly than anybody else. I still brush my teeth the same as everybody, everybody else, every other human being every single morning. Um, and I might be a talented vocalist. I'm horrible at numbers. My boyfriend's great. So he's very talented at that. Somebody's mm -hmm. a more talented teacher than I am. Somebody's a more talented firefighter or doctor or whatever so um I, I just wanted to to tell people out there that um we struggled just as much during the mm -hmm. pandemic as anybody else being at home um you know doing regular things not knowing what the day of tomorrow is going to hold in in store for us mm -hmm. and and I think it's important that we realize that we are all on a level playing field mm -hmm. um there was a saying that we are all in the same boat. No, we are not not all in the same boat. I feel like I have a little rubber ducky at this point and not a yacht. <laughs> but we are definitely all in the same storm. And that mm. is that is what's important to remember. Mm. We're all just human, man. Exactly. It was, it was just so lovely hearing you say that. I mean, you can imagine Cordia Buta sitting in the shower saying all these things. It was so much fun. 
Dos. <laughs> Listen, um, hopefully we'll see each other at some point. <laughs> um, and all of the best with all your plans for the future. And I hope yes. you love. That'll be great. Enjoy the relationship and, and everything. I'm happy for you. Um, so, Sylvia Prod. Dos a lag. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for creating this platform and this very, very interesting, um, <laughs> very, very interesting talk show. I, I think it's very cool. And I think there's something personal about that, um, which allows us to be more open, I think, because we are yeah. in such a personal space. It feels so safe. Mm -hmm. So thank you for creating that. And uh, I would love to have a talk anytime you are ready again. So lack of this. Thank you, Cordelia. I'm going to say bye. Bye to all the viewers. Lucky. Bye. <laughs>